Following the anticipation of the New York Mets retiring Dwight Gooden's number 16 and Daryl Strawberry's number 18 jerseys next season in order to honor their pivotal roles in the team's 1986 World Series triumph, a darker chapter unfolds in the narrative of these two baseball icons. It's a tale not of celebration, but of a sinister twist that marred a time when they should have been basking in glory. So brace yourself for a shocking story that delves into the unexpected turns that befell both Gooden and Strawberry during a moment meant for celebration. Amidst the gloom of the New York Mets' dismal performance in the summer of 1983, a season marked by finishing dead last in the National League and the departure of ace pitcher Tom Seaver, a silver lining emerged. The mid-season edition of 1979 NL co-MVP Keith Hernandez brought a glimmer of hope, and within the Mets minor league system were two budding prospects poised to change the team's trajectory. Enter outfielder Daryl Strawberry and pitcher Dwight Doc Gooden, whose journeys from the minors to the majors was the focal point of a riveting 30 for 30 documentary, delving into their lives both on and off the field at that time. Daryl Strawberry, the first of the Mets' dynamic duo, would make his mark in the majors during the challenging 1983 season. And despite a rough start where the team struggled and Strawberry grappled with strikeouts, he quickly adapted to the big league scene. Five weeks into his debut, Strawberry's performance soared, boasting a remarkable 936 OPS and even outshining eventual league MVP Dale Murphy. By the season's end, he earned the well-deserved title of NL Rookie of the Year. As for Dwight Doc Gooden, his debut came the following season, and he didn't take much time to showcase his pitching prowess. In his initial two months, Gooden set a striking record, banning 73 batters, which is one of the highest totals for a pitcher's first nine starts. But this was just a glimpse of his extraordinary rookie year, where he went on to finish second in NL Cy Young voting and clinch the Rookie of the Year award. Gooden's debut season, according to Fangraph's wins above replacement, stands as the most valuable by any player, whether pitcher or otherwise, since 1901. Now, the 1984 Mets, fueled by another stellar season from Daryl Strawberry and a robust contribution from Keith Hernandez, marked the onset of a remarkable turnaround. Surpassing expectations, the team notched 90 victories, which was a substantial 22-game improvement from the previous year's struggles. And here's where the twist lies because in the realm of statistical predictions, envisioning the Mets' trajectory based on factors like team war, player age, and market size would have suggested an average of 77 wins per season from 1984 to 1988. However, this team defied these projections and stunningly averaged 98 wins each season over that five-year span. This unexpected surge stands as the second largest positive differential between forecast and reality since the NL adopted the 162-game schedule in 1962. Amazing, isn't it? For this team, everything was perfect and it looked like they had gotten their rhythm. At the pinnacle of their careers, Doc and Straw showcased unparalleled talent and the fans loved them. For his part, Daryl Strawberry, with his effortless power and keen eye at the plate, resembled a young Reggie Jackson. His versatility extended to base running, consistently swiping at least 25 bases each season from 1984 to 1988. So, amidst a formidable group of young outfielders, Strawberry claimed his spot among the elite, alongside the likes of Barry Bonds, Ricky Henderson, Tim Raines, and Tony Gwynn. On the other hand, Dwight Gooden stood as a monumental pitching talent, reaching a level of dominance comparable to Pedro Martinez. In 1984, at the tender age of 19, Doc's fielding independent pitching FIP reached a remarkable 1.69, ranking as the seventh lowest relative to the league in a single season. Following this stellar performance, he posted a 1.53 ERA as a 20-year-old, marking the 12th lowest ever recorded in a season. The exceptional stretch contributed to Gooden achieving the 20th best pair of back-to-back -back war seasons by a pitcher in MLB history, all before turning 21. Plus, this period included a magical 50-start span from late 1984 into early 1986, where Gooden maintained a minuscule 1.38 ERA, striking out 4.6 batters for each walk and propelling the Mets to a 41-9 record when he took the mound. Over this five-year run, the Mets consistently secured 90 or more wins each season, breaking the mythical 100-win barrier twice. They clinched the World Series title in 1986 and came within a game of another in 1988, with Doc and Darrell emerging as the driving forces. This duo also claimed the top two spots in Team War during this span, becoming the 20th most productive pair of teammates under age 26 in baseball history. It was all going fine, and these players were already turning into legends. 
until, well, the sad truth is that despite their on-field success, Gooden and Strawberry were grappling with personal demons that would eventually overshadow their achievements and undermine the Mets' prospects of sustained dominance. Both players, who were unfortunately products of troubled family backgrounds, spiraled into cycles of violence and substance abuse early in their professional careers. Raised by alcoholic fathers, one of which was abusive and the other overbearing, Gooden's and Strawberry's lives off the field became marred by a legacy of violence against women and struggles with addiction. Of course, such controversies aren't good for any player, especially when they are as gifted as this talented duo. While achieving notable success early in their careers, the players' lives were in disarray. They were in multiple scandals, including Gooden's positive test for cocaine in 1987 and Strawberry's clashes with teammates, plus all the rehab stints for addiction. Gooden contemplated suicide, and Strawberry relapsed into drug use even after overcoming cancer. These two talented and promising players became symbols of wasted talent and the cultural pitfalls associated with star athletes in the 1980s. However, despite their personal turmoil, both players managed to perform at a high level for some time. In 1990, each of them produced over 6.5 war, indicative of strong all-star or borderline MVP performance, even as their off-field lives were unraveling. But then, their career trajectories fell short of the early expectations set during their emergence. Gooden's career total fell approximately 10 wins below the expected mark for a young pitcher with similar potential. And in the same light, Strawberry missed the career war totals of his comparables by 22 wins. Despite his troubles, Gooden was able to notch one last moment of glory during his career, throwing a no-hitter for the New York Yankees on May 14, 1996. Perhaps the saddest aspect of this story yet is that the parallel downfalls of Gooden and Strawberry contributed to the Mets' decline in the early to mid-1990s. After their successful 1990 season, the team's next five years, as predicted by the same statistical model described earlier in this video, fell short, averaging 73 victories per year instead of the expected 87. The once promising dynasty fueled by Gooden and Strawberry's emergence now faced the consequences of their personal struggles, marking a significant turning point in Mets history. Sadly, the duo's downward spiral continued as Strawberry departed for the Dodgers in November 1990, making an all-star appearance in his first season in LA but never fully recapturing his earlier career success. Gooden remained with the Mets for a few more years until a drug suspension sidelined him for the entire 1995 season, marking the end of his tenure with the club. Unfortunately, the Mets experienced a significant decline in that period, holding the worst record in baseball from 1991 to 1996. This shocking collapse served as a stark reminder of the fragility of a talented core of young superstars to a team. While extraordinary talent can rejuvenate a struggling franchise, it can also lead to disappointment, leaving a generation of fans to ponder on the unrealized potentials of their once budding team and only imagining what might have been. Since retiring in 2000, Dwight Gooden has continued to face ongoing struggles with addiction and legal troubles. But despite multiple arrests for offenses like driving under the influence, drug possession, and parole violations, the former New York Mets icon has remained active in retirement. The 58-year-old founded Gooden Brand LLC, focusing on e-commerce, brand marketing, and public appearances. Also, considering that he's often engaging in meet-and-greets with fans and participating in signings across the country, Gooden remains connected to the baseball community, which is a good thing for him and the fans that once watched him play. Daryl Strawberry, on the other hand, faced challenges during his playing days, drawing criticism for a perceived lackadaisical attitude. His manager, Davey Johnson, noted Strawberry's obvious potential for greatness, but felt he often settled for only hitting 30 homers and stealing 30 bases when capable of achieving more. Plus, despite being one of the game's best power hitters, Strawberry's unfulfilled potential frustrated many. This player struggled with the expectations and pressure of playing in New York, leading to some negative coping mechanisms for him. He would later admit to using substances as a way to punish himself and respond to fan negativity. Also, while facing a one-year drug suspension in February 2000, Strawberry was also battling a more significant adversary. It was colon cancer, which he was diagnosed with in 1998. He underwent surgery twice to remove cancerous tissue, marking a profound shift in his life's battles, and this contributed to the end of his career. Obviously, these two super-talented players would have achieved much more if it wasn't for all the problems and controversies they faced. Drop a comment below and let us know if you agree or you think otherwise.